Oh no, true or not true. I took immense criticism on the last plan and I'm taking immense criticism on the new plan. I will tell you the overriding thing that I've learned is politics and a pandemic do not mix. And yet I am in the middle of politics and a pandemic. I've got the governor on one hand saying, no go. And I knew where things were in the legislature because I had already been through this process just a few months ago. I'm being criticized because I wasn't inclusive enough about the plan, but I had to be able to get the plan through two committees. And the very thing the governor wanted is the very thing I could not get through the two committees. I don't blame him. I don't blame y'all. I don't blame the house. I do know one thing. Everything about this very process breaks my heart. Because there's no way, no matter what I do, can I bring people together. Because the politics in this country has gotten to the point where we're more separated than we've ever been before. I grew up in this building. And Senator Tarver knows there were days where people would come together and get the job done and compromise. The compromise is over. Times of compromise are over because we're all so polarized. I can be accused of many things. And I appreciated every person that came up here, especially Senator Barrow. Because regardless of our political differences, I consider her a friend. Because she treats me with respect, I treat her with respect, and we discuss things. And she's right, I opposed her legislation. I opposed it because I thought it was too broad. But I also never believed I would be in this position in these circumstances, but I am. I'm not sure the reason why. I ask God every day. I'm sorry, excuse me. This process takes a toll. Thank you. And the toll it has taken is tremendous. I'm not shedding tears for me. I shed them for my state. The hate mail that I've gotten from the right the hate mail I've gotten from the left. It hurts. It hurts because I know where I came from. I'm 
a graduate of Brulee High School. My class desegregated ourselves. We desegregated our prom. We desegregated everything that we could, and we did it on our own. I mean, can you believe in, 19, in the 1980s, we were still having separate dances? In my senior year, we elected the first African-American class president. With Representative Edmund Jordan and his brother, my basketball team stood up and we said they can play on our team. And we got shunned and games were canceled. I don't want this about race. I don't want this about politics. I want it about being able to deliver the vote, the right to vote, and it's under extreme circumstances. This is not the best plan. Unfortunately, it's the plan I felt like I could get past. The process is not, under the emergency laws, is not built for what we're trying to do here. It was built for natural disasters. So yes, I'm asking you to vote for this plan. And I know some of you can't. But I'm telling you, the consequences of not having a plan are far greater and far worse than this plan. We've been sent here to do a job and the job is being done, whether everyone agrees with it or not. I don't disagree with anything anyone said here today because I can see both sides of it. But unfortunately, it's got to go through y'all. And everybody has different constituents that they are representing. This is not like some other states where the Secretary of State has been able to step up with the governor and come up with a plan together. Or the, the, like in Alabama, where the Secretary actually has real authority that he can exercise on his own without anyone else interfering. What we need to do is think beyond this and begin a process by which we're able to deal with this type of situation. I'm asking you all, I understand where you're coming from. I understood where members of the House are coming from. I understand where the governor's coming from. But the bottom line is if we don't have a plan, we will have issues far greater than what is being um, testified by here today but also others outside of this building. Logistical, serious problems. So while all of this centers around who can get an absentee ballot, I'm trying to deal with the real logistics of having an election like we like to have, where results are at, given at the end of the night where we have good people under good circumstances safe to be able to conduct an election on election day and during early voting. We wanna give curbside drop off for those parishes that can do it. Change, this is change happening. We can't always agree on all the changes and I can't always think of all the issues that may pop up. But I would really like for us to move from here today and begin figuring out how we can begin coming together and confect plans in a better process than what the law provides for us today. We can't fix that today, but I know at some point we can. And I want us to do that. We need to do that. So for those of you who have even opposed the plan and stated so, I want to thank you for treating me with respect because I respect you all, every one of you. And some of you have become good friends. For those of you supporting the plan, uh, thank you. But I also know that y'all are going to you know, get some flack. 
But let's work together to educate whatever happens in the end. We need to educate our citizenry about how they can exercise their right to vote. And I will need your help on that because I don't have an endless pot of money to do that. So whenever this process comes to some sort of conclusion, let's all come back together as, as one and work with our citizenry to get them to go vote. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Secretary.